Hi, I'm Sean, and in this one, we're going to be talking about project coordination, specifically the tools that are available for keeping projects coordinated as used in our group. So, for communication and knowledge sharing, we have three big tools. Teams is where pretty much all of our communication goes. It essentially works kind of like both a messaging app like Slack, but it also functions in a way similar to a forum where you make a post. So for large teams, most things will be organized in posts in a channel, but it might be that sub teams will use say group chats, which are a separate feature of teams that work more like direct messages um, and might use those for more small group coordination. Now SharePoint, another Microsoft product is tightly integrated with teams where files can be associated with specific channels. So we largely use SharePoint for file storage or sharing uh, recordings of meetings, for example, or notes um, and internal documentation. Now, Notion is an external tool that the team uses for sharing things in more of a wiki style format. The Notion is open to the public and everyone can read it. It's our main knowledge base for anything that we want the world to know. Now, the team also has design file repositories. Now, the main difference here is that design file repositories are focused on specifically project files, not so much documentation, though it might, documentation may play into it. So once again, we have SharePoint, which can be used for, say, sharing CAD files. It's not ideal for project management because its versioning tools aren't quite as sophisticated as some other options. Now, Git is a big resource we use for both coding and some electrical CAD. Now we have github.com, or what we call the public GitHub, for some projects, and that involves using a, creating an account and using your personal username. And then we also have the Enterprise GitHub, which is a separate website where you actually use your Georgia Tech email. Now, a third option we have is Altium 365. Altium is a sponsor of the group, and for some electrical projects, we manage them through Altium, and Altium 365 provides an environment where we can easily collaborate on uh, ECAD projects, so like schematics and circuit boards. All right, now going into project tracking tools, we're actually going to be using a lot of Kanban or Kanban-like tools. So a Kanban board uh, can be used to track a project uh, action item through various phases. Now we have boards at different levels for different projects. And there's two main implementations of Kanban boards that we use. One is Planner, which is a Microsoft product available at the URL planner.cloud.microsoft. And then for more software oriented things, we track them on the projects tool on GitHub. So the basic overview of how a Kanban board works is you've got three to five bins. And for any Kanban purists, this might be a little bit more general. Um, just going over a Kanban-like workflow. So the first bin you're going to have is the to-do, and this is going to be the most abstract level of an action item. So you've got, for example, a large abstract thing that needs to be done, say implement path planning. If you give that to someone, it's going to be a little difficult to get started on that because it's not very well described. So then you move it to the ready for work bin. And at this point, you should have it more well defined. So for example, in the case of path planning, we might want to be able to request a map of our environment and also be able to call search functions so we can look through that environment. So we've got these checkboxes here. And once you've got it ready for work, then you can assign it to someone. And at that point, it's in progress. So let's say we've assigned it to Bob. And you can see here that he's already checked off the request map uh, component of this issue or action item. And, and now that Bob's completed it all, it ends up in the review bin. 
where someone else like Alice could review Bob's implementation. Now, overall, Kanban-like pipelines tend to go from to do, ready for work, in progress, review, and done. But the core ones you see most often and the default setting in planner is to do, in progress, and done. So now we're going to talk about how we coordinate times in our group. So there are three main websites that we tend to use, when to meet, when is good, let us meet. These are all free options. Um, and essentially it involves you get a link and you send it out to people and they all fill out their times. But if you've got 15 sub teams, it might be, and you're managing like four of them, it might be a little annoying to fill out each one over and over again. So another approach is using an Outlook calendar. So in Outlook, you can describe when you're available and when you're not available, and then you can use that to actually coordinate times using integrated tools. Regardless of the method of coordinating a team uh, meeting time, let's say you've figured out a time. University students are very busy. And one thing that I'd recommend is sending out reminders on the day of a meeting, particularly the first time it's meeting in a semester or the first time on a new meeting time. But you don't want to do this over and over and over again. So you can actually set up a calendar event in Outlook or Teams. So you can schedule it, say, in a Teams channel so anyone can see uh, when the meeting's happening. And then you can even use this to generate a Teams link and host a meeting virtually for remote participants. Now, one thing we do is uh, work sessions. So these are more unstructured time blocks where team leads or mentors are available. And these can take two big forms or main forms. So you've got open work sessions. So in those, anyone can come and work on any project. It might be a project specific or discipline specific time, but it tends to be more general, um, just a general time when the lab is open. Now, small group sessions, that's more specific to spe uh, certain projects. So you might want a smaller group of people so you can better mentor them um, or better coordinate be uh, because once you get a lot of people in a room, it gets a little chaotic. And these work sessions tend to have a bit of a tighter scope. So it might just be one project or a part of a project. Now, another thing that's useful to have is stand-up meetings. So in a stand-up meeting, you want to keep these meetings are uh, very short to the point. The point is just to have a status report. You want to limit the number of people reporting. Now you might want to change the people reporting week to week so people get exposure to the process. But ultimately, this is not really a time for long drawn out problem solving, but rather the progress that's been made, what's been blocked, and what's causing the blockage. This might precede work sessions for efficiency, just so you don't have to schedule multiple times because it can be a lot to ask for people to show up to four different meeting times for one project. But yeah, that's overall an overview of the tools we have for project coordination in the group as of right now. In the next one, we'll be talking about version control for managing, well, project versions. So, hope to see you in the next one.